In a major speech tonight, Joe Hockey effectively acknowledged that his first budget is seen as unfair by many voters and declared he wants to set the facts straight. While he insisted that his budget is fair, he warned the public not to expect the government to level the playing field. Political reporter Melissa Clark. It's been a month since the budget was handed down. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there has been much written and said about the Abbott government's first budget. Much of it negative. So, four weeks on, the Treasurer is trying to explain the rationale behind it. Our duty is to help Australians to get to the starting line while accepting that some will run faster than others. Joe Hockey says he admires Australians' egalitarian concerns, but says criticism describing the budget as unfair or exacerbating inequality is wrong. This misguided cry is made on the claim that not everyone is asked to contribute equally and that in the future some people will pay more for government services or receive less in payments. For example, concerns about the demise of universal health care or higher education accessibility are unfounded. They invoke mantras that reopen debates that were had and lost some 30 years ago. He's standing firm on budget measures to limit family benefit payments, to introduce a GP co-payment and deregulate the higher education sector. Although arguing the budget measures are fair, he warns they're not aimed at making society even. In striving to achieve equality is not the role of government to use taxation and welfare as a tool to level the playing field. The Treasurer's pre-budget mantra of ending the age of entitlement asked people to rely less on the government. Post-budget, he's asking them to expect less. Government does not have all the solutions. It cannot provide all the answers. Governments are increasingly compromised in their ability to achieve equality of opportunity. In our view, it is the responsibility of government to provide equality of opportunity with a fair and comprehensive support system for those who are most vulnerable. After that, it's up to individuals in the community to accept personal responsibility for their lives and their destiny. Our first budget is based on the premise that it is fair to expect those who have the capacity to pay should accept more personal responsibility for their cost of living, their cost of raising their children, their health services and their education services. It is nonsensical for government to continue to spend money at existing levels with the knowledge that this spending will not be sustainable and that in the years to come we will not be able to adequately assist those in genuine need. This is unfair to those who most need our help. And Ladies and gentlemen, our welfare system is unsustainable in its current form and it is not well targeted to those that really need our assistance. The federal government will spend $146 billion next year on welfare. That is 35 per cent of the federal budget. We spend more on welfare than we spend on any other single policy area, including health, education, or defence. Payments are too broadly available to too many people. As a result, less is available to those most in need. To put it in perspective, around one in ten households, one in ten households rely entirely on the government for their household income. Thirteen per cent of young Australians receive youth allowance. Over 70 per cent of Australians over 65 receive the age or service pension. More than one in 20 working age Australians receive the disability support pension. So we have a very comprehensive welfare system. But it should not be taboo to question whether everyone is entitled to these payments.